Hello everyone, I got a new video for all of you. This time I challenged myself to create a dungeon crawler game, trying to improve my programming skills on parts that I have not tackled yet, such as sound effects and in the end hoping to reach a more polished look for the game. The project is available on GitHub, the source code at the link in the description, but you can also play it in your browser on itch.io at the link below. The assets used are free ones taken from different sources on the internet. Also, I'm using the version 4.4, so after creating a new project, my first step was to tune some project settings, then start working on the player. The player is a node of type uh, character body 2D, so I can use the built-in move and slide function, which is very useful, and let the engine handle collisions uh, using some static bodies for walls. I added different animations for being idle, for walking, and attacking with a sword. I will be using composition, creating different components that can be reused on different scenes. I created one for an attack's hitbox, one for an entity's hurt box, and lastly one for an entity's health. Hurt box and health go together. Hitbox and hurt box extend area to these and will be used for both the player and the enemies. Then I worked on the player's movement using Lerp for acceleration and deceleration, as well as normalizing the velocity if the movement is diagonal. For switching between the corresponding animations and code for a given situation, I will use states and something similar to a finite state machine. Here you can see the change from idle to walk based on the player's velocity. You can also see that the sprite gets flipped based on the direction the character is going. When it comes to attacking, I check to see the, if the current state isn't already sword swing. And I play the swing animation as well as giving the player a small debuff in speed. This launch attack function tries to execute if the player inputs an action tied to the spacebar. After the animation is finished, I cancel the speed debuff as well as switching back to uh, idle or walk state. Then I added the hitbox component for the sword swing with two collision boxes, one to the left and one to the right of the player, that are initially disabled. On given frames of the animation, when the sword is extended and based on the direction of the character, one of the collision shapes gets enabled, allowing the sword to hit enemies. I also need to design some rooms, so for that I will use four tile map layers, one for the floor, one for the walls on the top left and right, one for walls on the bottom uh, with a higher Z value so it can render correctly over the player, and the last one for some decorations. To keep the player within the bounds of the room, I add the static body with four collision shapes, one for each side. The empty spaces on the walls will either be filled with walls or become doors, but that will happen dynamically and from code, so here you can see a sample that fills everything with walls. This set self function has arguments for first the position of the tile on the layer, a flag that marks if you want to delete a tile, and the position for the texture in the atlas. Here you can see how a room with full uh, walls look. To be able to add doors to a room, I created a function with a parameter for the side you want the door to be on, and here you can see how a room with some doors looks like. The next part is basically the core of what makes a game a good dungeon crawler, and that is the floor generation, meaning the layout of the different rooms. What I'm doing is something very simple, very rudimentary. First I consider the starting room to have a position of 0,0, and other rooms a position related to that, and all rooms must be connected. Then a while loop works alongside a stack that adds a random number of neighbors to every room. 
stopping it when it reaches 8, giving it, a, giving it a hard cap so the floor is not too big. In the console, you can see how an instance for the list of room positions looks like. I created a component for a door that keeps track of what room it is inside of, as well as what room it leads to. It is an area 2D, and when the character gets close to it, if the room is cleared, it sends a signal using events, which is a global script that I added. In the room scene, I had to add a door for each side, alongside a collision shape for it. I also had to change some small things inside of the add door function. I also included a function that randomly decorates the room with one of three preset configurations using the fourth tile map layer that I mentioned earlier. One of the decorations is a light source map that uses point lights. Also some functions in the in-game needed some small changes like adding the rooms, uh, adding the doors for each room, as well as adding the player to the current room. To handle the room change, the game listens to the room change signal from events, which takes the player to the new room using the center of the screen to mirror him. So if he walks up from the top door, he comes out the bottom door of the next room. Here you can see that in action as well as the decorations. Following up, I started work on an enemy scene, which will be inherited by different monsters. It has an animated sprite, hitbox, herbox, health component that all enemies share. In the script, you can also see how the death of an enemy is handled using a given animation, as well as fading the enemy out afterwards using a twin on the alpha property of modulate. Here you can see me whip up an inherited scene, name it Skeleton, give it a walk and death animation, set the values of export vars in hitbox, hurtbox and health, and the skeleton is ready to use. To create other enemies that behave similarly, the process is exactly the same and it is very quick. I also wanted to add some obstacles, so I created spikes that play an animation of racing and lowering constantly with the help of timers and signals, spikes which can hurt the player using a hitbox component. If we have to clear rooms, then it also makes sense that we get some drops. I decided to implement only healing potions that drops, they will have an area to the around them, that when the player gets close to, it sends a signal to display a message telling the player to press E to use it. I also made these HP pods drop out of chests. They behave very similarly to potions, with the difference of a fade-out effect when they are opened. Now to connect all these new additions. Firstly, in room we have a function to add a random configuration of spikes and a function to spawn a given number of enemies on a choice of several random positions. Then some functions to keep track of enemy deaths and room clear were needed, as well as ones to spawn chests. The game handles moving the enemies in the current room towards the player. And now you can see all these features in action. One issue that you might have noticed is that the player renders under the chests and HP pots, and sometimes it looks really bad. This will be fixed using those wise sort capabilities, which uh, basically renders the items based on their Y value. To be able to see the player's HP, I added an HP bar in the top left corner of the screen using a texture progress bar with different textures for the empty HP, full HP and border of the bar. You can also see it in game. 
Some other additions were displaying some helpful messages, one in the starting rooms that uh, tell you about the controls, others when the room is cleared, and to top it all off, I added music and sounds. Using audio stream players, one for the music track, another for the sound effects, and making use of events uh, global script to signal for the sound effects to be played, finally you can see the final result. A lot of the parts of the code went through different iterations, but the final result is available on GitHub, as mentioned. Also, once again, if you want to test the game, it's available on itch.io to, to be played in your browser. Thank you very much for watching. Any and all support is appreciated. What do you think I should do next? Hmm? For this project, I learned a lot because some of the things I did for the first time, and I feel mostly contempt but it's still a rough way from feeling like a real Polish game. Uh, for the future, I was thinking it was time I stopped making random games just to practice coding and try to work on, on some sort of passion project that will probably teach me much more. Bye bye.